Viewers, welcome to Super Important Views. My name is Steve. My name is Arnaz. Today we'll be going over the entire Godzilla Island Live from the Bandai Vinyl series. That is a lot, Steve. Yes, this is uh, 12 figures in total. <laughs> which uh, We have the entire set here, which is based off of a TV show that aired for one year. Which actually had more figures in the TV show, but this is what they released for the toy line. Which a lot of these are mostly reissues, but I think if I remember right, there's a few new ones spread out here and there. But this review is a thank you guys for 7,000 subscribers. I wasn't planning on doing one until we hit 10,000, but yeah, whatever, we'll do one for seven. Wait, we're at 7,000? <laughs> yep, we're at, actually we're over 7,000 now. Oh, two more thousand, Steve, then we can make the joke. You know what I want I'm talking about. Yeah. But we had quite a few requests for some of these random figures like King Cesar, Godzilla, Angra. So we just decided just to do them all in one video for you guys. As a big thank you for subscribing to our channel. Because you guys are awesome. So wait, wait. We're going to give them 12 reviews in one? Crazy? I know. It's not See, like we get paid for this or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You win on that one. Haha. <laughs> But without further ado, further packaging, uh, we only have one with still the card because this is the one I acquired at G-Fest this year, which he was the one I was missing to complete the line, which you can see here for his tag, you get Destroya on the front of it here, which is actually a pretty nice picture of the Kaiju, but to me that looks like some picture that you would have saw in the production photos. What's the G12? That is his number in the line, so he was the last figure. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so each one will have like G1, G2, G3, and then it would have the destroy afterwards or whatever kaiju it would be. Because if you want to know for the Godzilla Island, this is kind of the big giveaway is the picture imaged on the back here. And that, and it came out in 1998. Where are the hot ladies, Steve? Um, I don't know. I haven't actually seen the show. So I, I know of it. <laughs> and I think they're actually from it, if I remember what Timothy Price was talking to me about. But I still need to actually try to find that on YouTube or something. And on the inside, a lot of stuff I can't understand, but there's some phone hey. numbers. Hey, read that for me, would you? Um, one, two, three, two, seven, zero, eight. Oh, too You're shy. welcome. <laughs> so let's uh, get into the reviews. All right, so for this uh, reviews, we're just going to go over from my least favorite to my favorite. Okay, so, why are you starting with Fire Rodan? Because he's my least favorite out of this line. <laughs> what? All right, so a problem with a lot of the flying figures for Bandai's is they're not articulated in the wing areas. And his head can only really rotate a little bit, and his legs can come out a little bit. So if you want him standing, you can get him standing. Now, the only thing that sucks about that is he's mostly going to be always looking up because he's supposed to be like he's flying around. So that was why I was just never that big of a fan of this figure. Even though the sculpt for this is actually really nice. Like looking at Fire Rodan's head skull, looks really good. Really like the paint job for the eyes. Has this really nice gray beak. And overall his body is in a reddish orange color scheme. You can see here mine has some scratches. But again, had this thing since 1998. So he's been played with a lot. Same with a lot of these guys. And then for his chest area, looks really good too. Where you get his little claw sticking on the fur. Little nail protrusion sticking out on his tummy here. And a flesh tone color. His legs look pretty good too. Nails are done in a gloss gray, just like his beak. It's got his little tail on the back section here. Overall, like detail wise, doesn't look that bad. Got some copyright information on the back here of the wings. It's just, in terms of like articulation, it was just never my favorite playing around with when I was younger. Okay, I'll give you that one. Poor guy always have to look up to everybody else. <laughs> oh yeah, still pretty good though. Like if you're looking for a uh, fire road in though, and want to save a little bit of money and not get the Monster Arts version, this wouldn't be that bad sitting on your shelf. All right, next we'll go over Mothra Larva, because this, this is, it's a Mothra Larva. I just never was that thrilled with having a larva, even though I have quite a few of these laying around. I was about to say, sir, are you sure you're right about that statement? But then again, it's just Mothra Larva sitting on your shelf. It doesn't really, it's, it's going to look like this no matter what the heck you do, so it doesn't matter what the articulation would be for this, which for this Mothra Larva, you can rotate the head a little bit. But I did actually really like the color scheme on this, or it has this really nice metallic, almost bronze color on the top section, jet black on the bottom. Her face actually looks really nice here, where you got some pearly blue for the eyes, some jet black for her little mouth. Got her little legs on the under section here, some copyrights on the bottom. Get her little suction cup feet on this bottom here as well. Some semblances of the hair, her whatever you call that section on the back of the tail. Overall, like, details looks freaking awesome. 
And actually, uh, I had this sitting with my Monster Arts for a little bit. Just kind of as an extra little one, because it looks really, really good. But it's just, it's Mothal Larva. It's kind of hard to get excited about this figure, though. Next, we have Space Godzilla, which some of you guys might be like, oh, Space Godzilla? <laughs> Steve, you're failing the channel, man. <laughs> But for the Bandai Vinyl, I never was that impressed with this sculpt. Granted, it was the only Space Godzilla I had for the longest time, other than the Treadmaster one, so I was thankful for having a Space Godzilla. Steve, I got a question. It's been a while since I've seen this movie, but is this how it's supposed to be? This uh, eh. <laughs> It's kind of on the Bandai Vinyl, set up this way because of the way it's cut. Yeah, but it looks like somebody hit him there with a tail and just like... Spread everything. Yeah, it never really looked that good. I never really complained about it though. It's one of those details like on the vinyls you just kind of live with. Can we just say his battle damage make me feel better? Well, mine has some little scuffs here on the paint, like you see here on the shoulder crystals, on uh, some of its dorsal spine crystals on the back oh, here. So it is battle damage then. And a little bit on the crown on the front of the head. But my main problems with this one and why it's so low on the list is just in terms of sculpt, especially nowadays with some of the figures I have, like the Monster Arts version, it just doesn't look good in comparison anymore. And even like the Bandai uh, Creations version is not that far off from what this one was because it's pretty much just a reissue but with a little bit of a different sculpt. But I... Just the eyes look kind of derpy on this guy, for the most part. He has very yellow eyes, a little bit of that blue that you see for the rest of his head kind of peeking through for the pupils. He's got some nice pearly whites for his teeth, red for his tongue, very predominant metallic red for his chest and groin region, with more of that dark blue for the rest of his body, and some frosted white where his dorsal spines are supposed to be. Yeah, I'm just never was that impressed. Like, even like, he has no leg articulation. Wait, what? His tail really? can rotate a little bit, even though he has the seam here at the waist. Absolutely nothing. He only moves his arms. Oh, never and his mind. Head. That's all you had to play with when you were younger, is just... Rawr. <laughs> 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 and that was it. So that's why he's kind of low, too. It's just I never really played around with him that much, either. Which is why you don't see as much of the white peeled off as, as you would expect. Then next, we got the Space Kaiju King Ghidorah. Which... This is the part of the list that gets really hard because the rest of the figures actually look pretty good compared to the movie. So I never really had that much complaints. Now we're just having the list of kaijus that just, I have more favorites than others or figures have replaced them in the collection or maybe I've had a ton of versions of this guy already. This is, is in that category. Is this the new suit or is this one on... Oh. This is Heisei. This is the Heisei one? Yeah, okay. this is Heisei Ghidorah. Which looks really awesome. Really like the heads. Especially since the middle head has a closed mouth and the two side ones are open mouth. So it gives you a little bit of variety on this vinyl. Which I always thought was really awesome. Really like the just metallic gold throughout. No differentiating colors here except for the mouth area. Bringing the light a little closer just so you guys can see the paint job on the inside of the mouth. But for the rest of the details for the body you get that trademark diamond scaling with a... Uh, some square rectangle patterns here for the undersections of the neck. Its wings actually look really nice too, where you get that even one extra little arm kind of going through the wing there. It looks pretty cool. Doesn't have the sharp protrusions like you would expect to see for this King Ghidorah, but it's a Bandai vinyl. Don't want to hurt any kids playing with this thing. Back section looks really nice, like the little spikes coming up on the top sections of its neck. And for its tail, pretty standard looking. It has a little bit of a curved bend to it and a hair on it. And for the little frills at the end, it looked pretty nice as well, but not quite as large as what you have seen in the film. I never understood his tail. What was up with that? What, with the two tails? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's Three oh, heads, two tails, like... I think it kind of... I like the flow of it, to be honest, because you think it would be like one giant tail for the center head, but then because it has the two extra heads, the tails spray off to represent those two. So it's like one base... To separations. Another question. I didn't know that heads had our articulations. I noticed that when you were moving it around, Steve. Um, yeah. Uh, the glue kind of worn off on these ones. So, uh, my Ghidorah heads have articulation. I wasn't going to bring it up because they initially aren't really supposed to move, if I remember correctly. I'm sorry, Steve. It's just when you were moving his head, it almost popped off. I was like, oh. But it does have articulation on the wings, so you can rotate them bad boys all the way around. Oh, that's sweet. Rotation here at the tail, and its legs can move forward and back. So, actually, it has a still pretty wide range of motion, except for 
My heads aren't supposed to have as much articulation. Next we have Mecha King Ghidorah, which I do like a lot more than the standard King Ghidorah. I just always thought Mecha King Ghidorah is a really cool looking kaiju. Especially with the robotic center head, but the center head on this one is actually opened, unlike the other Ghidorahs, which the Ghidorah heads here are the same as what we had on the previous Bandai. And then most of the rest of the kaiju is sorely different because that's just how it was in the film. But I like the metallic silver here for the body. It looks really nice. You can see the little cockpit area on the front section of the middle portion of its chest. You have its nice metallic silver wings with metallic gold on the intersections for the little panels. But on the back, it's entirely silver. Ooh. But the one thing I do like is it has the little prongs protruding out of the wings like you expect to see. So it does hold a lot of details in comparison to a lot of the other vinyls that I've seen. And for the tail, got the same kind of spreading sections, but you got the little, whatever you call those things at the end. Drills? <laughs> yeah, they're kind of like little drills looking antenna protrusions. They're kind of just semblancing the tails that you saw on the standard King Ghidorah, but just in a more metallic feel. It's got its little bracers on the bottom of its feet with some Which copy are awesome. yeah with some copyright information on the bottom of its pads on the foot and overall detail wise looks freaking gnarly like even for the center head it has that little red here on the top there and some emerald green for the eye paint job details on this look fantastic but it's been replaced by my monster arts version of my collection Awesome. Plus, I was always previously spoiled with the Treadmaster version as well. So, granted, I really love this figure, but in terms of just as a collection, a whole, it just has a hard time standing out compared to the Monstars version. But for the articulation, as you see here, the heads don't rotate on this one because it's not supposed to. But the wings, just like on King Ghidorah, can go forward and back. This one can't go all the way around, though, because you have the panels on the back here getting in the way of that articulation. But tail can rotate side to side. And the feet can move forward and back. Okay, see, before we begin this, this is where you're going to hate me and a lot of people. Out of the Godzilla universe, this is my favorite robot monster. Mogera. <laughs> yes. And I like Mogera. I think his monster arts figure is actually pretty fantastic. And he's a cool looking kaiju. Well, mecha kaiju. And even it was one of the only monsters that actually have his own film. I know. But for the figure, again... Really got spoiled by the Trendmaster version because that version <laughs> is actually a really awesome figure. And there's not too much difference between the Trendmaster version and what you saw in the film. So when I got this guy, he wasn't quite as impressive. It was more just like the scale really wowed me when I was younger. But now that, again, we got Monster Arts versions. Eh. <laughs> but the details for the vinyl, though, still look really sweet, though. Really love his little drill nose, even though mine has a little bit of paint missing, which I think is something that actually newly happened, because I don't remember it being there beforehand. Huh. Got some metallic yellow here for his eyes, a little bit of red on the undersection of his little laser in the top of his head. Got some metallic blue here for his shoulders, for his uh, thigh guards. <laughs> I don't know what those are, but they look funny. Yeah, got the tread seam here on the lower section of the legs are metallic blue. And also for the enclosure for his center beam. The only real splotching of the paint is right here for his cones that cover up with spiral grenades. The blue for the, when they sprayed over it with the airbrush, went onto the forearm. Which isn't anything major for these vinyls, but it's just something to point out on this guy. But detail wise, a lot of it really holds up very well, where you have his butt saws on his back. His tail looks really nice, where you can even see a little bit of the thruster on the undersection. Feet look really good. You even have the trends on the bottom, even though they're not painted, with some copyright information. And you can see a lot of the details on here that would hold up for what Magura should look like. It might have been nice to maybe have, like, one arm open. Would have made it cool, because kind of, it was hard to play with this guy when I was younger, when he's like, I'm shooting lasers! Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> We had like the Treadmaster one where it opened up and you had the grenade, so it was a little easier to. Oh, Treadmaster one is opened up? Yeah. Oh. So a little, it was a little easier to imagine the battle than with this guy, which is why he's a little bit lower on the list than some of these other ones. But for his articulation, his arms can go all the way around. And that's about it. What? I don't know, yeah, his tail doesn't even move. Oh, poor guy. And then we got Mecha G, which this is my favorite Mecha Godzilla. I know people kind of look at me funny when I mention that. I'm looking at him funny right now. But the Heisei Mechagodzilla was always just my favorite in terms of design. Granted, it's not my favorite of the movies. Don't get me wrong. Like, I really love the show and even uh, 
Godzilla X Mechagodzilla is really awesome. But you just always stood out as a Mechagodzilla. It just looked like what you would expect a Mechagodzilla to look like. Like if he was actually created and designed to fight monsters, he would look something like this, I would imagine. Maybe with a longer tail, but other than that. It's a little more aerodynamic, I guess. And then for this Bandai Vinyl, his paint job is definitely not the best. As you can see, his metallic silver is definitely swaying in a lot of spots on this guy. Yeah. He's always been the one I've been contemplating getting a new one, just to kind of have a clean version. But then again, he's from my childhood. I, I, I display him proudly on my shelf, especially since I just really like this version of Mecha Godzilla overall anyways, which helps a lot. But for the head sculpt for this guy, is really nice. It actually holds a lot of detailing here. Just like you'll see on the Monstars version where you get a lot of nice panel lining. Sides are done with this really nice metallic gold with his body being predominantly metallic silver. You can see a lot of the details here for his little vents on the top of his shoulders. His little tasers that shoot out of his arms. Hands look really nice. Sculpted very well. Even some detailing on the palm section. Abdomen region looks good. It's got his little dorsal spines on the back. And speaking of his legs are done very nicely as well. Where you have his four-toed legs, kneecaps look nice. Isn't it weird that I like his kneecaps? They look funny in they, a good way. Yeah, it's like they are actually really cool. Bottom of his de have oh. yeah, the bottom of his feet have a lot of details on it. Oh, scratch that. Never mind. I like the bottom of the feet better. Yeah, which is cool. You also have his little stubby tail with some copyright information on the tail section here. And a lot of black on the tip of mine's tail. Because again, he just kind of sat in a toy box for the longest time, so he's not in the greatest shape. But for his uh, articulation, head can go all the way around. Arms can move all the way around as well. And that's it. But it looks like you can move. No waist. No legs. Uh, oh, sorry. The tail can rotate a little bit. <laughs> Are you sure that's just not broken, Steve? No, I'm pretty sure that's... Moving on. <laughs> Next we have Destroya, which uh, he's on this part of the list. Because if I would have had this figure when I was younger... I would have been so blown away by this guy. <laughs> it looks so good. He does. The head sculpt looks really nice, like his open mouth. He has some really nice gloss white for his teeth, for the little protrusions coming out of the side of his mouth. Horn looks really nice. Mine has a little bit of paint missing on the top of freaking whatever. <laughs> this guy's uh, how many years old now? Yeah, so this guy's 18 years old. I would be impressed if there's not something amiss. But the body details look really nice too, where you get his little weak spot section of his chest shows a very nice with this uh kind of like peach color over top of it body sections look really good really like his claws but sadly there's no articulation for his claws though so they just kind of stick out forever like that it's got a little bit of the protrusions coming out of the side of his shoulders claws on his legs look really nice too where you get that slightly glossed over bone color but it's kind of sprayed just all over the front of his knees. So his front section is very white, but it does give him a lot of color variety, which is really nice for this figure. You got the little bit of the toenail sticking out on the back of the foot there. Tail looks really nice. And what's also cool is he can fly. <laughs> his wings are articulated. So when you look at him from the front, eh, get out of there, tag. He looks really gnarly. And compared to the, some of the other Bandai vinyls, they look proportionate to the body. So again, if I would have had this guy when I was younger, I would have been thoroughly impressed with this guy. He also got his little pincher on the end of his tail. Details look really good on his tail as well. And that's also where you can find the copyright information on the bottom. And for his articulation, his legs can go forward and back. Nothing too crazy there. And then the wings can move in and out. Which I think is really cool too because it kind of helps save on shelf space too if you want to just tuck them in behind them. Even though it looks a little off for this kaiju. Really helps on shelf saving. Then next we have Gigan, which we have gone over on this channel before on the Gigan 3-way review. But I'll go over again just briefly. For this kaiju, I really like his gloss red eyes. Look very nice. You can see mine has a little bit of a damaged paint job on it. But overall still looks really good. Has a lot of nice metallic silver here for his beak. Horns on the top. For his claws, buzzsaw, nails on his, or whatever you call those things on his toes. <laughs> Just his feet in general. And nothing here, sadly, on the back. Because for his entire body, it's in a more robin blue color. And then you get these same kind of King Ghidorah patterns here with that really nice metallic silver. Especially shows up very nicely on his wings. And you get a lot of really good details on the intersection of his wings. His buzzsaw looks really nice too. And overall, probably my favorite Showa Gigan that I own. Really? Easily. 
Because I have some of that are like slightly more colored, but I think in terms of design, he just looks the most accurate in my opinion. And then for his articulation, his arms can go all the way around and his feet can move forward and back. But this is the one I have that his leg likes to pop off really easy. So that's the motions you're going to get out of it. All right, hand me the uh, next guy, Ernest. Who is it? You know who it is. No. Wah, 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 wah. Oh. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the king of the kaijus himself, Godzilla. Which I've had quite a few requests for this guy because he has the really nice metallic greenish blue dorsal spines. Which always really stood out for me because he kind of looks like he's about to do his atomic blast. I was about to say that. That's what it looks like. And I always thought it was just really awesome in this kaiju. You can even see on the back of his neck too, you get that really nice spray of metallic blue. Oh, so freaking pretty. You can see it on his tail. Which, doing what they do with these Bandai vinyls with the spray, because it overlaps in certain sections... I really love it when they do it with these effects because it helps to kind of give it more of an illumination. So it really does give the effect that he's about to do his atomic blast. Why well, might I nice to actually see maybe a little bit of that in his mouth because his teeth are not colored very well and never really were. Oh. Where they're actually more gold for reasons. Bling bling. <laughs> <laughs> then some uh, gloss red for his tongue. His eyes are also done in a very nice gold with uh, black for his pupils. His body is predominantly black. It's not charcoal gray. It is super, super black. But for the detailing for his uh, chest area, it looks really nice where you get the more rounded edges for his pecs, for his abdomen, and same here for the neck details. While the rest of his body is in the standard traditional scaling that you see on a lot of the other Godzillas. And what I really like about this Godzilla too is you can see a lot of the muff, mu muffled effort, muffled, muffled, muffled. His muffins. Muffins. Mmm, mm, tasty. Muffins. You can see a lot of the muscle definition on his uh, thigh here and on his calves look really good. You know good. why? Because he never skips a leg day, Steve. Heck no. Because I'm freaking swole. And it just shows up really well in the rest of this kaiju. And this is easily one of my more favorite Godzilla figures in my collection because I've had him for so long. And when I first got him, he was just the best looking one I had. Hands down. It's only more recently I've acquired things that kind of pushed him a little bit out of the limelight. What was the first thing that took over his spot, Steve? Oh, that would be the uh, second production of the Heisei Monster Arts. Because that's when I started actually spending decent money on Godzilla figures. And then it just kind of spiraled out of there. But for his articulation, his head can rotate all the way around. Oh, God, don't do that again. It looks creepy. <laughs> his arms can move forward and back. His legs got a little bit of a kick to it, but nothing too crazy. And a little bit of rotation here at the tail. Hey, guys, you know Arnez's favorite song in the world? Caesar! Right, Caesar. Ne right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, there was a girl actually doing it at G-Fest this year. What? Yeah, it was pretty impressive. She was even dressed up and everything. Oh. <laughs> I needed to put that G-Fest video out so bad. I actually, I videotaped it. It was pretty cool. It took some pictures. You should. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping to get around to uh, this weekend, is finally getting that all set up. Because I've just been super busy since I got back from work. But for uh, next, for our, my second favorite out of the line, so you guys probably know the first one by now, is King Cesar. Which, first one? You're not a kaiju. <laughs> Aww. You don't deserve to be in this video, Bumblebee. <laughs> Nobody even likes you. Not even a prime. All right, so for King Cesar, uh, the reason why he's my second favorite is he's really the only King Cesar I own. I was about to say, you better explain what a good reason why this is number two, Steve. And that's because I've seen other of the Bandai vinyls, like the creations and stuff, and this is the only one I felt like I needed. I've never felt Batman. like I needed to get any other King Cesar figure because... This guy does it for me. I do need to get a Final Words version, though. I don't know. I do like his paint job on him, though. Oh, it's so good. He's got this really nice metallic gold for all of his fur. His eyes are... It's a kind of a weird, darker, reddish-brown color. I like it. With it looks some like black he's pupils. Evil. Yeah, it gives him a little bit more of a menacing presence. Yeah, with his mouth looking really nice, too, with that glossed over white there for his fangs. Detailing for the rest of his body look really great. I even like how they got the spirals and the fur on his chest. And he's got his little armor plating on his little claws here. The fur right here on the elbows, which I would have liked to have seen also have the paint job on it. Because it doesn't stay consistent, especially back here too on the, the fluff on his butt going to his <laughs> tail. 
But so most good. of the rest of the details hold up really well for this kaiju, even his claws are painted in that metallic gold. And overall, I was just always very impressed with this figure. And I even played with this thing a lot too when I was younger, and he's in really good shape. I hope he's the bad guy. He looks like the bad guy. You've seen his movie. No, no, I'm saying when you played as a kid, he was a bad guy because of his eyes. Well, no, he's King Scizor. He's a... He fights everyone. Mortal Kombat. Eyes don't die. Pope. Nope. Pope. Nope. Baby Godzilla I'm back. Sure. What? And for his articulation, his head can go a little bit left to the right. Nothing too crazy. Arms. Oh. Yeah. Can go all the way around. His legs can go forward and back. And his tail has a rotation as well. So, my personal favorite in my collection. Right, please <laughs> Wrong <explain>. movie. <laughs> Angerous? Yes. It's the only... Well, okay, so for starters, this is the only Angerous I own from uh, the Showa line. That isn't the 1955 one. Okay. So, he's already pretty high up there. And detail-wise, he looks pretty much straight out from the movie. Like, I love the paint job here for his eyes, which there's this gloss white with some black for the pupils. He has this really nice metallic gold here for all of his spikes on his back. Looking freaking gnarly. And I like, too, how the spikes on the back kind of go in a bunch of random directions. Then I have a uniform, just like you would have seen on the suit. The tail paint job could have maybe been a little bit better because there's that a lot of that metallic gold just kind of sprayed on top without a care in the world. Yeah, I was going to say, is this tail supposed to be that color too, or is that just by accident? Nah, it's kind of by accident. <laughs> but for the tail, it looks really nice too. It comes out very nicely from the back section. I like that his legs are set down just like the suit actor would be, would be on his knees. And his feet just kind of flop to the back. Can you put his feet the proper way? But, like that? Yeah. Doesn't that look weird? Yeah, just, I'm cool with him walking around like a baby. It's fine. <laughs> okay. It works for me. He's a crawler. Yeah. Front legs look really nice, too. You can even see a little bit of that muscle definition here for his forearm. So it gives it a little bit of separation there. So it's not like one clean chunk right there, which I really like. Got some metallic gold for here for the claws. Same with the horns on his nose, his crest, his teeth. All metallic gold. Which I know isn't quite accurate for the kaiju from the film in terms of paint job. But the figure's details always just stood out very well for me, which is what really made it more of a must-have piece for my collection. And he even has some detailing here on the under section of his belly, with that same kind of circular scaling that we saw in the Heisei Godzilla, and some of his copyrights on his feet. Now, for his articulation, head can rotate all the way around, legs can move forward and back, and we already showed you with this one too, but it can go pretty decently forward and back oh he can high five himself that is awesome yeah <laughs> and no articulation at the tail so to conclude this review uh we're not going to have comparisons for this one because at the beginning of the video you kind of saw how they all stand next to each other and i'll photos here with the guy who's fighting anyway so you guys can enjoy the scaling here but for the godzilla island series it's definitely one of my favorite if not my favorite bandai vinyl line that they've released because I really like pretty much all the kaijus in the line. I think overall they are very nice representations of the kaiju. And are pretty cheap to pick up, to be honest. And you own them all too, so. Yeah, one, yeah it's the opposite I own them all. But even Destroy at was $40 with the tag. Ooh. And that was at a convention, so he's a little cheaper if you want to get a hold of him online. How much do you think you spend for the entire collection? Uh, back in the day, I think it was about 20 bucks a vinyl. Is what we got them for. So for 11 of them, would have been 220 which isn't really that bad for vinyls. Uh, so for, for, add the 40 I paid 260 for the set back in the day. Yeah, that's not overall bad. Oh, no. It's not like they've really gone up that much in value either since then. With really going by convention price, destroy a doubling. Of course, he would be the one that's expensive, you know. Yeah, well, initially, I think it was him and Mecha King Adora that was the hardest to get out of the line. Oh, but that would be like a hard one to choose if you can only buy one you know yeah like for me i'd say angers is probably the easiest one to pick up out of the line yeah my personal favorite so if you guys are in the bandai vinyls want a decent amount of variety for your collection and love majority wise the heisei run then i definitely recommend taking a trip to godzilla island but what do you guys think do you guys want any of the godzilla island figures what's your favorite bandai vinyl line or is x plus just more you think please let us know in the comments Look closer picture of these guys on Facebook. You want to click the link in the description below, which I'm not looking forward to doing all those photos. And help us defeat those kaijus by hitting that like button. Subscribe, become a ranger today, and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.